What's up guys, we're here today at Pariah Brewing and I'm joined by Brian Mitchell, who's the CEO, founder, brewmaster, all of the above, right? Sorry. Yep. Cool. In disciplinary situations, I am dead. <laughs> when people get out of line. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how, how did you come to open up Pariah Brewing? Uh, well, I've wanted to open up Pariah since about 2010, uh, so I've, this is a long time in coming. Uh, but I'm not a silver spoon, so it took a really long time to get uh, get enough funds together, and, um, and then the igniter program came along, and that's a way to do it without a lot of initial upfront. So that's really what allowed this to happen at the scale we're at. So, uh, what kind of beers would you say that you specialize in? Maybe specialize in a certain style. Or... Uh, we don't really stick to any specific style guidelines. That's kind of our thing: is not sticking to styles. Our main focus is highly creative, unique, and beers that are not currently on the market with a hard emphasis on balance and utmost quality. How did you decide what beers were gonna be part of your core lineup? Once we got the Igniter green light, I started pilot brewing and this was like well over a year ago. So I've been working on all these recipes for a long time. Like some of them uh, are stout. I've had that recipe since 2011. Uh, our wit beer I first brewed in 14. Erotic City I brewed in 2015. So all of these have been around for a long time because we felt it most best represented like what we were going to be about in moving forward. That's really nice to hear that you actually took the time because I know a lot of people out here around town, they've been home brewing for like a year or two and they think they can start up, but you've really taken the time to make sure these beers are dialed in yep. so that they're really high quality beers. Yeah, I probably home brewed every single one of these beers seven, eight times before they even touched the big brew house just because uh, it has to be good around yeah. here, you know what I mean? San Diego, you're not gonna get by with half-assed beer. <laughs> <laughs> so. Which is the first beer that we're gonna start off with? Okay, that's our off-white wit. So that's the lightest in texture and flavor that we have, but it's still a ton of flavor. Uh, that's actually inspired by Taiwanese boba tea, if you've ever had that. Um, tea with the little uh, tapioca balls in the mm -hmm. bottom. Um, someone asked me if I could brew a beer that could be served with the tapioca balls, and I was like, nah, we can do this one further and just incorporate all of it into a beer. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like our beer mosa, pre-made. What's interesting is that, like you said, it's a wit, right? Yep. The wit, you get orange peel and coriander, but there's so many more flavors that it's really complex. Each time I keep sipping it, there's just layer after layer after layer after layer, because you add more stuff into it, right? The base is pretty much a straight up wit, excluding coriander. We don't use any coriander, but we use orange blossom honey, lemongrass, jasmine green tea, uh, dry orange slices, and fresh ginger as well. How did, how did you come up with adding all those ingredients into it? Just, just playing around and just... Yeah. Um, Randall's at all or just uh, no basically what I do is I'll go I'll go buy like say for that beer I go pick up a hoe garden mm -hmm. and I'll take ingredients and put it in there and just let it steep and then just kind of see how it interacts it is very light refreshing I mean today's really hot and yeah. this is the first beer that I would, I would reach out for um, and this is gonna lead me to, to um, when I first came in here I can't believe you know there's so many brews in San Diego everybody either uses like a tulip or a shaker pint glass yep. and you don't nope why is that? Because I like to make things difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we, we really respect beer. I love beer in particular. I love the, uh, the Belgian way of serving beer where every beer has its own glass. Uh, the, the, you do the uh, beheading of the foam, you get the sacrifice, rinsing it, presenting it to the customer with the label facing forward. That's the service I like as a drinker, so we wanted to respect the beer in the same way here. Yeah. It's not a, we're not a sports bar, you shouldn't just be throwing beers back. You know, it's an experience. We put a lot of thought into our beers, and if, they, if then you just throw it into a shaker glass that doesn't do anything for the product, it's, yeah. that's the last line of defense. It should be presented in the best way possible. Uh, what's the second beer that I'm gonna be having? That is our Erotic City. I gotta, I gotta kid in real quick. I had this, this is the first beer I had from you guys, yeah. and it hook, line, and sinkered me in of like, wow, you guys are really standing out. And I remember Jesse, Jesse, right? Jesse. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I was like, Erotic City, should I have it? And he's like, he said, try this beer. If it doesn't change your life, come back to me and I'll, I'll get you another beer. That sounds and like Jesse. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> like, I gotta, I gotta sip it again. So tell me, tell me more about Erotic City and the name and, and what it is. Uh, I'm a huge Prince fan. So the name is inspired by Prince. If we're gonna make a beer referencing Prince, it has to be a sexy beer. There's no way around it. 
Um, so my wife actually came up with the ingredients for that beer and then it was just my job to figure out how to make it taste good. So she wanted to use orange blossom honey, muscat grapes, and grains of paradise. But yeah, the base is a Belgian triple, I guess you could say, um, but with all the ingredients are there. We don't claim style on it because it's over over 30% of the fermentables from honey and grape. So it's it's barely beer <laughs> in I mean, legal terms. You can... <laughs> I think this is a pretty dangerous beer because it's it's so flavorful and so easy to, to like drink back and knock back, but yeah. it's at nine percent. But I think the, the the sweetness of the honey and then the, the fruity flavor from the Belgian yeast is, is what makes it so drinkable, like above all else. Thank you. You know. Yeah, that one's funny because that beer is pretty polarizing. I think people come in and they're either like, "Oh my God, this is what the hell is this?" Uh, the funniest thing I've seen so far is someone checked it in on Untapped. Their comment was, I'm not sure what the hell I just drank. <laughs> <laughs> and that, to me, I'm like, see, that guy gets yeah. it. Yeah. It's not supposed to be, it's not anything, it's itself. It's, yeah. It does its own thing, and it's hilarious. And also, too, people will come in and they'll drink it, and they're like, no way, this is not. And I'm like, just wait till you get up to go pee, and then you'll see. When you start getting noodle knees, as I call it. <laughs> um, what is the third beer I'm going to be having today? So that is our Dorcha Extra Stout. What makes it an extra stout? Uh, it's a style. Uh, okay. Foreign Extra Stout is a style of stout. There's like hundreds of them, I think. Uh, Guinness actually makes one that you can get pretty much everywhere, but uh, that beer we brew with molasses, uh, our own proprietary blend of coffee from Bird Rock in La Jolla, oh, yeah. and also uh, cocoa nibs. I got like a little dry sensation that went into a coffee and a chocolate ending, and. It has so much body to it, but it's still light. So yeah. It's really light to drink. It was really soft water, so everything I think is pretty delicate, even if it's higher ABV. That, which is 7.2, it drinks to me like a 5%. Beer. It does. I, I would have never thought that this is 7.0. Yeah. You're kind of fooling people with the ABVs because they're <laughs> so easy to drink. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it's fun. But uh, Dorcha actually means like uh, dark and mysterious or dusky. It's a female name. It basically means like a beautiful, mysterious brunette woman, which is my favorite type of woman. So, <laughs> a mysterious, promiscuous. Yeah, man, that was that was good. How did you decide on on, on doing that as a step um, versus like a milk or? Because I'm Irish, so I wanted to do something that was Irish inspired. I'm like 70% Irish, so that's kind of me throwing back to uh, my heritage. That's on cool. That one. What's the uh, next beer in line? Next beer is our spring seasonal, which is uh, Mare and the Monk. Uh, it's kind of somewhere between a Saison and a Pilsner. Okay. Very much a Pilsner in its makeup, but it's fermented with a uh, uh, Belgian yeast that I actually brought back from Belgium on my honeymoon. I'm still trying to swallow. <laughs> You brought it back from Belgium? Yeah. Like the drags in the bottle or like? Yeah, I got, I, uh, we went, we spent like five days in Belgium just trying all the beer we possibly could. We went onto the brewery that I got that from and I was like, dude, I have to bring this yeast back. It's the most unique Belgian yeast I've ever had. So like for me, it throws a ton of pear, like vanilla and like grassiness, which you don't get in most Belgian yeast. Usually they're just fruity. It's very clean. Like you do taste the pear and then I taste like the grassy notes yep. on the back end, like on, as it's on the finish. That beer is funny because most people come in and they're like, hoppy, it's not hoppy. I'm like, yes it is, it's just European hops. Yeah. So it's not the hops that we associate with as Americans. Yeah. It is good. I, know, I was talking to, um, to Nathan and uh, Clayton over at Epic and, and they're telling me, which makes sense, is like when brewers come in, it's, they don't want the IPA, they're over it. You know? Yeah. Because like, that's what everybody wants and that's what they're brewing. They want to have something different. They want to have something maybe yeast driven or malt driven. Right. Um, yeah, there's so there's such so many styles of beer. Why, reg why regulate yourself to one? You know, that's silly. Especially in this city, there's hundreds of styles of beer. So yeah. enjoy the breath. <laughs> What's the next one down the line? Uh, that is our IPA. Uh, that's our dank. <laughs> That's our uh, Dank Drink IPA. Dank Drink? Yep. What's the story behind the name? Uh, it's just a rad name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we use a ton of mosaic and uh, a little oh, bit of Amarillo in that beer. Um, but that is a good example of us uh, focusing on balance. Because mm. while it is super hoppy, it's also balanced and it's not super bitter. Like nowadays, I feel like you go around San Diego and people are really towards like the West Coast, like bitter hop 
uh, style of beer that's produced or are they really into the haze craze and they just want yep. really big juice bombs that they often forget. Like, no, this is what an IPA should taste like. This is what a well-rounded should um, beer should taste like. Yeah, it shouldn't be watery. It shouldn't be taste. It shouldn't taste like aspirin on the aftertaste. Yeah. And it also shouldn't be sweet. You know, it should be somewhere in the middle there. I mean, it's called an India pale ale. Pale ales have balance. Mm -hmm. Just a bigger, more assertive version. You know. Yeah. And I think we kind of forgot that. Yeah, you do get that that grapefruit um, flavor that comes in with that like a moderate amount of bitterness, and then it cleans off uh, nicely with the malt to balance it out. Right? Yeah. That's what's nice. Not just like somewhere it's just all grapefruit all the way or. Sometimes where they might add too much grapefruit and it almost seems like it's an extract in a way because it's right. too overpowering. Yeah. It's it's I kinda don't like beers that are too like certain flavor driven because right. the base beer doesn't shine, which right. it should. It's, it's yeah, that's our top priority. No matter what we put into a beer, it has to be balanced and it has to be uh, with respect to the base uh, of the beer. So with over 120 breweries in San Diego. And counting, it feels like everyone's just like popping, popping, popping. Um, why should people come to Pariah? I love all the breweries in San Diego County, so it's tough to say why to come here over someone else. But um, I think uh, I think we're truly offering something unique that no one else is doing, and you know that's our top priority. And people can love it or, or hate it, and that's up to them to decide. But um, we just want to offer something unique and, yeah. and different and valuable and uh, high quality. Uh, what's the last beer um, on this fight? This is our double. I'll pass it to you. So this is our double IPA. This brand new. We've we've only brewed that once so far, um, but that's our clearly juice double IPA. Kind of poking fun at the hazy IPA thing. Uh, it was Ooh. our goal to show. That, yeah. <laughs> it was our goal to show that you can have a beer that is super hoppy and juicy yeah. without needing to be aesthetically uh, cloudy. You know. Aesthetic is not a determiner of, is not determinant of aroma and taste. Yeah. It's just aesthetic. So we wanted to prove that. Man, I'm getting a lot of like grapefruit and guava in this thing, but it's, like you said, that is like the juice yeah. answer for people who are looking for it. Yeah. Man, this is really good. And we use a new hop technology in that called uh, Lululemon powder, which is like the hash of uh, the hop world. So we use a ton of mosaic uh, 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 hop hash in that. Are you guys? Family friendly, dog friendly, like who can come into the tasting room? Uh, anyone, yeah, family friendly, dog friendly. We've got a water bowl and treats that people can feed their dog. Yeah, anyone's welcome. The travel cat, that's cool, that's awesome. Um, and aside from here in the tasting room, where else can people find your beer? Uh, we're getting out there. We're only three months in now, so I think we have maybe 50-ish 50, 50 outside accounts, draft mm -hmm. accounts, and uh, we'll be bottling soon, so we'll be in liquor stores as well. All right, guys, um, that about wraps it up. I knew that was going to happen. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Isn't that the worst when you know oh, you're going to fuck God. up what you're saying? It's like <laughs> words. Use your words. Enunciate, because that makes sense. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, that about wraps it up here at Prior Brewing. I want to say thanks a lot to Brian for letting us come in and try his very unique beers that he has here. Be sure to check them out. They're part of the craft um, building here in North Park. And uh, cheers to Prior Brewing. See cheers. Thanks, dude. Cool.